Welcome to MD Zephyr Lectures. I am Dr. Danish and today we'll be talking about Lacrimal System. If you are new to my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe so that you can have notification for all the new videos and share them with your friends as well. So in today's lecture, our aims and objectives would be to understand and develop visual memory about Lacrimal System, where the system is present and how it works. Lacrimal glands are a serous type of exocrine glands that secretes the lacrimal fluid onto the surface of conjunctiva and cornea of the eye. Lacrimal fluid acts to clean, nourish, and lubricate the eyes, and when it is formed in excess, it forms tears. Now we will talk about the anatomical location. Lacrimal gland is located anteriorly in the supralateral aspect of the orbit, which is this part within the lacrimal fossa. Now this fossa or the place where the lacrimal gland is present is actually a depression in the orbital plate of the frontal bone. As you know that this portion is formed by the frontal bone and the part of the frontal bone which is this is actually the orbital plate of the frontal bone and in its supralateral portion we have a depression where we have lacrimal gland present now i hope now you're very much clear about the concept where the lacrimal fossa is present talking about the anatomical relationships superior to the gland is the zygomatic process of the frontal bone inferior laterally is the lateral rectus muscle as you could see and anterior to the lacrimal gland is the orbital septum and posteriorly is the orbital fat. Now, lacrimal gland is approximately two centimeter long and it has to pause the orbital and the palpebral. Orbital part is larger and sits on the lateral margin of the levator palpebral superioris muscle. This is the orbital part. It is present supralaterally over the muscle that is levator palpebris superioris. On the other end, the palpebral pod, which is smaller, it is located along the inner surface of the eyelid as you could see over here. Now talking about a bit of histology, the lacrimal gland is a compound tubular SNA gland which is comprised of lobules which produce a watery serous secretion known as a lacrimal fluid. Now the lacrimal fluid produced by this gland, it is secreted into the excretory ducts which empties into the superior conjunctival fornix. Now come to the diagram. These are the ducts which produce lacrimal fluid into the this part and this part of the eye is the superior conjunctival fornix. It flows from here to other part from where the lacrimal passages drains it down into the nose and that part is the inferior meatus of the nose. On the other end, when this fluid is produced, it is spread over the eye by means of blinking. This is the orbital part. This is the palpebral part. These are the duct ducts from where the lacrimal fluid is entered into the superior conjunctival fornix and from here, by means of blinking, it goes to this part, which is the medial canthus. And from here, lacrimal passages drains it down to the nose through inferior meatus. Now talking about the lacrimal apparatus. Lacrimal apparatus is the system responsible for the drainage of the lacrimal fluid. Lacrimal fluid is produced by the lacrimal gland. It is drained by the lacrimal apparatus. Now, after secretion, the lacrimal fluid circulates across the eye and accumulates into the lacrimal lake. And this is the medial canthus of the eye. From here, it drains down into the lacrimal sac via a series of canals, punctiles, which goes into vertical and horizontal canaliculi, the common canalicular duct, which opens into the lacrimal sac. Now this lacrimal sac drains down or actually narrows down into the nasolacrimal duct. The nasolacrimal duct ha at its end has a valve known as the valve of Hessner. Its importance will be discussed in the clinical pathology of nasolacrimal duct. Now coming to the text, lacrimal sac is present in the groove of the lacrimal bone 
and the frontal process of maxilla and rest of this I have already explained. Now talking about the arterial supply, it is the lacrimal artery which is derived from the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of internal carotid. Venous drainage is through the superior ophthalmic vein and ultimately enters into the cavernous sinus. Lymphatic drainage is through the superficial parotid lymph nodes. So three things to remember. Arterial supply, lacrimal artery, venous drainage through superior ophthalmic vein, and lymphatic drainage through superficial parotid lymph nodes. Now further talking about the innervation, the sensory innervation to the lacrimal gland is through lacrimal nerve, which is a branch of ophthalmic nerve. Lacrimal gland also receives autonomic nerve fibers from parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic preganglionic fibers are carried in the greater petrusal nerve, the branch of facial nerve, and then the nerve of pterygoid canal before synapsing at the pterygopalatine ganglion. From here, the postganglionic fibers travel along the maxillary nerve and finally the zygomatic nerve. Now, stimulation by the parasympathetic nervous system will cause fluid secretion from the lacrimal gland. Now the sympathetic fibers originate from the superior cervical ganglion and are carried by the internal carotid plexus and deep petrusal fibers. They join the parasympathetic fibers in the pterygoid canal and follow the same route to supply the gland. Now talking about the tear film. Tear film is a complex mixture of substances secreted from multiple sources like lacrimal glands, the accessory lacrimal gland, the meibomian gland, and the goblet cells. Tear film has three parts or three layers, the mucin layer, a water or aqueous layer, and oily or fatty layer. Aqueous layer is the thickest, Mucin layer is the thinnest. The fatty layer prevents the overflow of tear film and it lubricates the eye as well. Now talking about the tear secretion, there are three basic mechanisms, the basal secretion, the reflux secretion, and emotional secretion of tears. Basal secretion is the continuous secretion of the tear film, which keeps the cornea moist and lubricates the eye and keep the depths away. Whereas reflex secretion is because of irritation of the eye by a foreign body or bright light, and these reflex tears attempt to wash out the irritant and they are produced by the main lacrimal gland. However, the basal secretion is by the accessory lacrimal glands. On the other end, the emotional secretion is associated with the emotions of anger or joy and they are also associated symptoms associated reddening of the face and sobbing with emotional secretion which is absent in case of both reflex and basal secretion. Now the functions of tear film include they maintain the optical stability, they serve as a lubricant, has antibacterial action, removes debris and provide oxygen to the eye. Thank you very much for listening. If you like my lectures, kindly subscribe and share, by, and share with your other medical fellows. Thank you very much.